in this third video what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the motor we're going to bring in some gears and then fit these with some shafts and shaft collars first of all choose place and in the structure folder we're going to locate two screws the 6-32.5 inch and the 6-32.25 inch open both of these up and bring these in together and what we're going to do is rotate our view around just scroll in slightly and we're going to fit these in place to do this we're going to use the eye mates again so choose alt we select the eye mate and we're going to match the first to this position here so this position for the smaller screw is just to the left of the bearing and fitting through that first hole with the longer screw what we're going to do is choose the eye mate and we're going to match that to to this first hole here select OK so we should now have a longer screw and a smaller screw next to the bearing let's now place the motor in so go to motion locate the 393 motor open this up and place one of these in this is a sub assembly already so it's multiple parts not just one single part and what we're going to look to do first of all is just to click on it and free rotate it round to roughly this orientation here so that the two struts sit to the left of the bearing we're going to attach it to first of all what we're going to do is we're going to make this surface here with the metal so this will put our motor in contact with the metal select OK so this is now joined but it's free to move around what we're now going to do is choose both of these struts and we're going to use a mate option by choosing the center line and the center line of the screw select OK once the first one's fitted it will still spin so again just tilt this backwards repeat the constraint option to the center line and the corresponding screw center line and that will fit together nicely. This should now no longer rotate and our motor is in place. The screws allow us to achieve that outcome but what we're now going to do is fit some of the other features on. First of all choose place and what we need to do is locate a 4 inch shaft so go open and bring one of these in and what we're going to do is click on it and free rotate it round. I'm going to try and get it into this orientation here so that we're ready to start to fit this inside the motor. What we need to do is choose constrain, pick a surface, and then we're going to try and match that to a corresponding surface just inside the motor. So scroll in gently, click, and what we'll do is we'll match that to that surface. So this is now sat on this bottom surface here. What we now need to do is choose an opposing face. So the top face won't do because that will still cause it to slide from side to side so we need to choose an opposing face choose this surface here what we then need to do is scroll around very carefully to find and see that opposing surface inside the motor so that will be this surface here select OK tap and roll out and then just move back in see what we've done now. So if we can see the square of the shaft now fits into the square of the motor. One of the last things we can do very quickly is to choose to mate the last surface which is the end of the shaft. Rotate round and we're going to peer inside the motor And what we're going to do is choose that flat surface at the back of the motor like so. So if we now scroll around and select OK, this shaft should now be locked in place inside the base of that motor. What we now need to do is introduce a collar just here. So go place, locate in the motion folder a shaft collar. This is again a sub assembly bring two of these in and select OK and again we're going to choose a simple mate option to fit the surface to the surface of the metal 
and click OK and then we're going to choose to constrain the center line to the center line of something on this axis so ideally perhaps the so perhaps the center line of the motor there so that's OK and this will then fit one of the colors in place for us let's repeat that again by first of all constraining the center line like so and let's match that to the center line of the axes like this drag this away and what we're now going to do is going to fit a gear in place and then fit the collar onto it so choose place we're going to locate our 60 toothed gear we're going to constrain the surface of this to the surface of the metal and we're going to line up the center line to the center line of our collar and now what we can do is we can now constrain the surface of the collar onto the surface of the gear and select OK so now our gear will spin round, our collars will spin round and the whole thing should not now pull out of the motor this is the first step in fitting some of the gears what we now need to do is fit a pair of shafts through these holes a pair of collars to fit onto them and then a pair of gears so let's do that now place locate two gears one and two select OK and just as we've done previously choose constrain surface to the surface and then repeat with the center line to the center line zoom out zoom back in surface to surface center line to center line and OK there are our gears in place we're now going to bring in the collars so again place locate two shaft collars one and two and again constrain the surface to the surface of the metal and its center line to a corresponding center line and again repeat down here constrain surface to surface and center line to center line and OK what we can now do is bring in two shafts so let's go place we're going to locate a four inch shaft one and two and this time what we're going to do is we're going to strain the top surface to the surface of the collar make sure they are chosen to be flush and we're going to offset that to enter in a measurement of minus five millimeters and select OK. What we're going to do is just going to repeat that very quickly over this side so again flush and then offset minus five millimeters and select OK. What we're now going to do is to again use a mate option we're going to choose to mate this surface of the shaft now we need to rotate right out and right round and then zoom inside the hole to locate to this surface of the gear and then we'll apply this and we're going to slide the shaft out of the way constrain this internal surface to this surface here and select OK let's now repeat this with the other shaft so again constrain top surface to the inside under edge slide it out of the way and again constrain the top surface there to the inside edge there and select OK we should now have all our motion in place and we're ready to add wheels and collars